Hello, sisters and brothers, and welcome to the Fellowship of the Spirit. The precept that we're going to deal with today is being holy in God's eyes. It's just entitled, Holy. Sisters and brothers, there's too many false prophets out there. And the, the one thing I, I saw, like the one false prophet I saw on Facebook, he was saying he was so holy that he couldn't touch the ground. And he had the men of his congregation leapfrogging in front of him, and he's stepping on their backs as he's walking out of the congregation. Sisters and brothers, that's foolishness. Holy Father, like they call the Pope, and all this other foolishness. But God requires us to be holy, though. So what does it mean to be holy in God's sight? Because we know there's nothing we could do to gain entrance into the kingdom of heaven. We're standing in this faith that we're, that we're living in because of grace. That free gift. When we sinned, we should have died. But we were given grace so we could find out about God's commandments. He didn't kill us till we had the choice to either serve him or not. And as we decided to serve him, we're walking in grace now. So how are you going to be holy? When you can't be holy, when you have to come under the holy shed blood of Jesus just to be reconciled to the Father, how in the world are you going to be holy in this flesh? Well, let's take a look at it. We'll start this off in 1 Peter, the first chapter. 1 Peter, the first chapter. And I'm going to start this off, sisters and brothers, in verse 14. 1 Peter 1, I'll give you a minute to get there. 1 Peter 1 and verse 14. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lusts in your ignorance, but as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversations. Because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. So, to be holy in all your manner of conversations, it is written, to be holy, for I am holy. Let's go back and see where it's written. But first, let's go to 2 Peter, the third chapter. Since we're right here, let's go to 2 Peter, the third chapter. And I'm just going to read two verses, ten, or three verses, 10 through 12. 2 Peter 3 and verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? All holy conversation and godliness. Verse 12. Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Sisters and brothers, what manner of persons ought you to be in all holy conversation and godliness? How should we conduct ourselves? Well, let's go find out where it's written now. Let's start with Exodus, the 19th chapter. Exodus 19. Exodus 19, and let's go right to where the Lord told Moses to tell the nation of Israel how they could be his priests, his holy nation. Exodus 19 and verse 5, now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then shall ye be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine, and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests. And a holy nation. These are the words which thou shall speak unto the children of Israel. So, the way to be a peculiar treasure and to be holy unto the Lord is to keep all his commandments, statutes, and judgments, to take hold of that covenant. If ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant. Let's go to Exodus, the 31st chapter. Exodus, the 31st chapter. The Lord called the Sabbath day a covenant within the covenant. He said it was a perpetual covenant, the Sabbath day. Exodus 31, Exodus 31, and I'm going to pick it up at verse 13. 31 and 13. Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily my Sabbath ye shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations that ye may know that I am the Lord that doth sanctify you. Sanctify means set apart. So you shall keep all his Sabbaths. That includes the feast days, sisters and brothers. 
This is the covenant he's making with Moses and the children of Israel. Verse 14. Ye shall keep the Sabbath therefore, for it is holy unto you. Everyone that defileth it shall surely be put to death. For whosoever doeth any work therein, that soul shall be cut off from among his people. Six days may work be done, but in the seventh is the Sabbath of rest. Holy to the Lord. Whosoever doeth any work in the Sabbath day, he shall surely be put to death. Wherefore the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. The Sabbath day is holy to the Lord. Be ye holy as he is holy. Keep the Sabbath day. Let's go to Leviticus the 11th chapter. Leviticus the 11th chapter. Leviticus 11. This is God's dietary law. Where the Lord lays down or sanctifies or set up, sets apart the difference between the clean and the unclean. What we can eat and what we can't eat. Okay? And this is the end of this chapter. <coughs> Excuse me. Verse 44 and 45. Leviticus 11 and verse 44. For I am the Lord your God. Ye shall therefore sanctify yourselves or set yourselves apart. And ye shall be holy. For I am holy. Neither shall ye defile yourselves with any manner of creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. For I am the Lord that bringeth you up out of the land of Egypt to be your God. Ye shall therefore be holy. For I am holy. I guess the Lord, if he's eating, he ain't eating the unclean food. Let's go to Leviticus, the 19th chapter. Leviticus, the 19th chapter. And the Lord is going to lay some more statutes and judgments and commandments down. And in the beginning of... Leviticus 19, verses 1 and 2. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto all the congregation of the children of Israel, and say unto them, Ye shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. And then he's going to lay it out. First he's going to say, Ye shall fear every man his mother and his father, and keep my Sabbaths. I am the Lord your God. Then he's going to say, Turn ye not unto idols, nor to make yourselves molten gods. I am the Lord your God. And he's going to give you some more commandments, statutes, and judgments. Go to the next chapter Leviticus 20 and he's just going to carry on and keep giving commandments statutes and judgments okay and we're going to pick it up in verse 7 and 8 sanctify yourselves therefore and be ye holy for I am the Lord your God and ye shall keep my statutes and do them I am the Lord which sanctify you or sets you apart be holy as he is holy not create your own holiness and this will be the last verse. We're going to jump down to verse 26. This will be it. Leviticus 20 and 26. And ye shall be holy unto me. For I the Lord am holy. And have severed you from other people. That ye should be mine. Severed just means separated. Or sanctified. Set you apart. So sisters and brothers. That's what it means. To be holy in God's eyes. So I thank you for the opportunity to rightly divide God's word, and I hope somebody got something from these scriptures.